Welcome back everybody to our course Introduction to Quantum Optics. In this lecture today we want to start discussing the different field states of the electromagnetic field that can occur when we just look at a single mode of the radiation field. And in the last class we derived the operators for the electric field, for the magnetic field, for the vector potential. And today we want to see how different field states actually give rise to different properties of the light field in this single mode. So let's get started. So remember in the last class we had introduced the electric field operator uh, as a sum over positive frequencies and negative frequencies. And in this lecture today we just want to consider a single mode of the radiation field. So this simplifies things dramatically before we had to sum over all the modes characterized by their different wave vectors k. But today we're just going to pick a single mode and look at field states of that single mode. So let's pick a certain mode labeled by some wave vector k, but in the subsequent uh, course here we're not going to write out this k anymore explicitly. So when we think of that, really think of just one mode where we singled out one k vector with one polarization, but now we're just going to stick with that and we're just going to drop that index from now. So this means we just have a single mode, so we don't have to sum over all the modes, and the single mode is characterized by this uh, electric field operator by this operator for the electric field of our light field. So we see we have the destruction operator, the creation operator for creating and destroying photons, and we have here this prefactor. Now, in order to save us some work in writing down this, we're going to kind of simplify this field operator by working in natural units. In units where well, we don't have to write out explicitly this prefactor anymore, so all the electric fields that we're going to write down in the subsequent lectures, unless stated otherwise, are going to be considered in this kind of natural unit square root of h bar omega divided by 2 epsilon 0 v, where v is the volume of our box for which we quantize the modes. And we're actually going to see that this kind of field strength is a very characteristic field strength for the vacuum field, even when you have no photons present in the system. So very often, therefore, this is also called kind of the vacuum field strength. Okay, so we measure now all of the electric field in units of this vacuum field strength. And uh, then we can just write the electric field operator in the following way. We don't have to write down this prefactor anymore. It's just a times e to the minus i chi plus a dagger e to the i chi, where chi was this phase factor omega t minus kr minus pi over 2. So now let's look at distinctive states of the electromagnetic field that we can have. And the first states we're actually going to start with in this lecture are the so-called Fox states the eigenstates of our harmonic oscillator where we have a defined photon number n photons in the mode of the electromagnetic field. And uh, we can also say that we have the nth degree of excitation of the harmonic oscillator attached to that mode. Those are kind of the two equivalent viewpoints we can take. So we have n photons in the radiation mode and this is an eigenstate of the number operator. So now let's for example calculate what the action of the electromagnetic field Hamiltonian onto such a Fox state is. Do you remember what the outcome of this would be? Did you get it right? Well, the electromagnetic field Hamiltonian for a single mode radiation field, that's just h bar omega times a dagger a plus one half, now applied to state n, and that's just h bar omega n plus one half applied to state n. And since n is an eigenstate of this number operator n with eigenvalue small n, then that's just h bar omega n plus one half times n with the eigenenergy of this state given by h bar omega n plus one half. Okay, that was simple enough. Let's look at a few other things. Let's, for example, cal calculate the fluctuations in the photon number for such a Fox state. Well, first of all, we have to remember how to calculate fluctuations. So if you want to calculate the variance of an observable in quantum mechanics over a given state psi, how would you do that? Well, 
Well, one way to do it is to just calculate psi of, let's say, an observable A minus the average value of A squared. This gives us the variance of this operator A. Sorry, I shouldn't write operator here anymore. The variance of A of this kind of observable A. So now let's apply this to our number operator. So we have the same thing here. The number operator is n. So we now want to calculate the fluctuations. So that will be just the expectation value over the state we want to calculate the fluctuations in. This is the Fox state for the state we're looking at here. The operator is n. The average value of, of n is given here, the expectation value of n. And now we have to calculate this. Well, let's just do that. Let's just multiply this out, this square. That's just n square minus 2 n hat plus n hat squared expectation value. Okay, so now these are just scalars. We can just pull them in front of the expectation value. So we have basically n expectation value of the operator n squared minus two times expectation value of n hat squared plus expectation value of n hat squared. And this just gives us n n hat squared minus n hat squared. So we see that the fluctuations are given by the expectation value of the operator squared minus the expectation value of the operator squared. So what would that be in case of the number states? Well, this is just kind of gives us n squared. So let's do this now explicitly. This gives us n n squared n minus. This also gives us n so this gives us here another n squared. And uh, since we can pull this just in front of the expectation value, it's just a scalar now, we just see that this is just the same thing. So it's just n squared minus n squared and therefore zero. And that's of course completely natural. The expectation value of the fluctuations of a Fox state of the number of photons that we have in that Fox state is just zero because we have a precisely defined number of photons in that mode so the fluctuations vanish. There are zero fluctuations in the photon number for this Fox state n. Okay that was simple enough. Let's calculate something else. Let's calculate for example the expectation value of the electric field. So at a certain phase angle chi. So the electric field operator for the single mode radiation field that's just one half a e to the minus i chi plus a dagger e to the i chi. We calculate that over the uh, expectation value over our Fox state n. So we basically get one half n a hat e to the minus i chi n plus one half n a dagger e to the i chi n. And these are again just scalars. We can just pull them out. And then we have the destruction operator on n gives us square root n times n minus 1. And the creation operator gives on n gives us square root n plus 1 times n plus 1. But n plus 1 is orthogonal to n and n minus 1 is also orthogonal to n. So both of these terms actually vanish. So this one's 0 and this one is also 0. So we have the strange result that the expectation value of the electromagnetic field is actually zero. So there seems to be no electromagnetic field present in the system. And now this is a bit weird because see the Fox state we're talking about could contain a lot of photons, could contain let's say 10 to the 21 photons, could be a huge amount of photons in that mode, but still the expectation value of the electromagnetic field of the electric field would be zero. So, so why is that? How, how, how can that be? Well, before we interpret that, let's calculate something else. Let's calculate the fluctuations of the electric field. 
Okay, in order to calculate the fluctuations, remember, as we just derived in the last slide, this is just the expectation value of the operator squared, so the electric field operator squared, minus the expectation value of the electric field operator squared. Okay, so this one we know is just zero, this is what we just calculated, but the first term we don't know what it gives us. So we just basically have to put in our electric field operator and do the calculation. This gives us one quarter n a hat e to the minus i chi plus a dagger e to the i chi n squared. And now we just have to square that term. So we'll see what we get. One half, one quarter here. N a hat squared e to the minus two i chi. For the other term, we get a dagger squared e to the two i chi. And then we get the cross terms where the phase factors cancel plus a hat a dagger plus a dagger a applied to n. Now these first terms applied to n will create two photons. This, this term will create two photons and therefore the state will be orthogonal to n. So it's going to give us zero. This term is going to destroy two photons. So this gives us n minus two here and it's also going to be orthogonal to n. So that also is going to kind of be zero. So we only have to think of these last two terms here, a a dagger and a dagger a. Now what's a, a a dagger? Remember I could just rewrite that as a dagger a plus one due to the commutation relations between a a dagger uh, being one. And uh, so this now is the number operator n. This is the number operator n. So basically I just get one quarter n 2n plus 1 applied to n. And therefore I get just one quarter n 2n plus 1 n. So n over 2, 1 half n plus 1 half. So the fluctuations of this state seem to increase with the number of photons. So it's a kind of still a very strange result. We have the expectation value of the field operator being zero, but the fluctuations, the variance that we encounter here seems to be growing linearly in the photon number. So the fluctuations are becoming larger and larger, but still the expectation value is zero. How can we reconcile those two views? Well, one way to view that, if we want to think of the field state in terms of classical oscillating electromagnetic fields, electromagnetic waves, sinusoidal oscillating electromagnetic waves with the frequency omega, then we can think of it in the following way. We can actually think of this Fox state as a superposition of all kind of different sinusoidal phase with kind of random phases uh, equally distributed between 0 and 2 pi. So here I've just picked 20 kind of random sinusoids with random phases between 0 and 2 pi. And when you add them all up, when you calculate the expectation value of the electromagnetic field, you see that for almost every positive value you find an equal negative value such that the expectation value will average out to 0. However, the fluctuations, as you can see here, those are going to still be very, very large in the system. Yeah. So now let's add a few more waves to this. Now I've done the same thing. I've just picked 100 sinusoids with random phases. And you can indeed see even better what I said before, that for every kind of positive value here of the electric field, we also encounter a negative value of the electric field for kind of a sinusoid with a different phase, such that the expectation value of the electric field will be zero, but still kind of the fluctuations are going to be very, very large here. So these fluctuations here, this delta E that we see here, that's just going to be square root of uh, one half n plus one half. So this is going to grow with like the square root of the photon number, kind of for large photon numbers, and it's going to become larger and larger. Now, you actually also see something interesting that even for n equals zero, which we call the vacuum state, 
where there are no photons in the system, even for this vacuum state, we have fluctuations of the order of uh, one half of this natural kind of unit of the electric field that we introduced in the beginning of this lecture. So that's why we call this kind of field strength the vacuum field fluctuation strength because it characterizes naturally the strength, the standard deviation of the vacuum field fluctuations. So this is a very important result. It tells us that even the vacuum field, even when there are no photons in the system, no photons in the system, the system exhibits fluctuations. The electric field fluctuates. So if you go into a system with no photons and you measure the electric field at some point in time, you'll find a non-zero value. Huh? Only when you average over many of those measurement results, you'll get the expectation value of zero electromagnetic field. But for kind of a single measurement of the electric field, and we'll look how we can kind of do that in the subsequent lectures, you will actually find a finite result, even for a system, the vacuum itself, when there are no photons present in the system. And these vacuum field fluctuations, they're actually very, very important. They are going to be able to, we're going to see that they actually can introduce the dynamics into the atom, even when there are no photons in the system. They are actually the cause of spontaneous emission uh, it, which we can, in fact, view as being triggered by these vacuum fluctuations. All right, this is all I wanted to tell you today in the lecture about Fox states. They're actually very strange states. They're actually very non-classical state. They don't give us the classical oscillating electromagnetic field that we're used to in Maxwell's equations, but rather give us this strange result of a vanishing electric field, however, with large, large fluctuations. So clearly, these Fox states are not the classical states not the classical field states. And in the next class, we want to actually look what kind of states give us the best approximation to classical field states that we know from Maxwell's solutions. Thanks a lot for watching today and see you in the next class.